Try to find a com comfortable way to breathe. You can either pose that question in your mind, what would be a good way to breathe right now, and see how the body responds. Or you can actively experiment. Try longer breathing for a bit, see how that feels. And if longer breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, try shorter breathing. Then you can try deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. You want to provide the mind with a good place to stay in the present moment. Because this is one of the reasons why we meditate, is to have a sense of well-being that you can tap into without having to spend a lot of money or to depend on a lot of other things outside. You're trying to develop an independent source of well-being here, because we all need to rest. Human life takes its toll. And with all, all the distractions we have around us, the mind really needs a place where it can settle in and be still. Now, in the beginning it may not seem all that impressive, the sense of well-being that you can gain here, but as the mind learns how to stay here and to resist all the temptations to run off and think about this, think about that, try to come up with something clever, try to come up with something entertaining, so just be right here with a sensation of breathing. You find that you can settle in, and there's a greater sense of well-being that comes. It comes in all directions, all over the body. And you learn how to appreciate that. This takes time, but it's time well spent. So you can have this source of strength, a source of respite, that you can take with you wherever you go. But we don't do this just to feel good in the present moment. A sense of well-being that comes from within. Being independent means it also gives a sense of being independent in how you're going to decide to live your life. When you see that something is worth working for, something is worth making sacrifices for, and you check the Buddhist teachings, and the Buddhist teachings encourage it as well. You're going to need strength to do that, because the world doesn't often immediately reward you. As I say, there's no virtue that goes unpunished. There are a lot of things we have to sacrifice in, in order to live the life that we know is the right life to live, to fight for the things we know have to be fought for. Not that you're going to kill anybody, but you have to struggle with yourself to overcome your temptations to take the easy way out or just go with the general run of the, the crowd. Because there's a lot of behavior that goes on in our world that's just really pretty dishonorable. And it's becoming more and more the norm. But you have the freedom to decide whether you're going to make it your norm or not. And having this sense of well-being that comes from within. I mean, they've done studies to show that they can actually use mindfulness practice or concentration practice to make soldiers better killers, to make traitors more aggressive traitors, which is not what the meditation is for. You have the choice, though, that okay, the world may be going one way, but the Dharma goes another way, and you have the, the choice to go with the Dharma. One of the Buddha's lay disciples, who was a stream runner, someone who had actually tasted his first taste of awakening, was asked one time if the world were lined up against the Buddha, who would you side with? And he said, I'd side with the Buddha, even if it was the whole world, even if it was the rest of my family. Because he'd seen what the Buddha taught was true, that it really was a genuine happiness that you could find within him that goes even deeper than concentration. But this also means, as we live our lives and we deal with other people, we want to make sure that we do the honorable thing. And having that sense of honor 
requires a lot of inner strength. And this is what the meditation does for you. It gives you that sense of well-being, that sense of solidity inside. That the honorable choices will often require. The, the word honor is something we don't hear much in our society anymore. And it's gotten a bad name from all those old movies about the South where some guy gets upset and either his honor has been besmirched or this woman he admires, her honor has been besmirched, and he's going to have to go out and kill somebody in order to defend that his honor or her honor. That kind of honor that can be besmirched by somebody's snide comments is not the kind of honor we're talking about here. There's an honor, another honor that comes that's totally an inner matter, which doesn't have anything to do with what other people think about you. It has to do with the fact that you know that you're acting on skillful intentions and you're willing to make sacrifices, even when things outside seem bleak. And you wonder if doing the skillful thing is going to ever show any results. Well, sometimes the results of your actions are going to come right away, and sometimes they're going to take a long time. But you want to have that principle inside that what you do and say and think is going to be informed by the the desire to do whatever you're doing and say whatever you're saying and think whatever you're thinking in a skillful way, based on compassion, based on discernment, based on your sense of what's right and wrong. So you want to examine your sense of right and wrong to make sure that it really is honorable. And then learn how to stick with it. And this requires strength. So as we're meditating here, it's not just to hang out in a nice place, although that is an important part of the meditation. And learning how to appreciate how nice this can be here is an important part. But you've got to learn how to use that strength. Wisdom doesn't come automatically from concentration. But the con the combination of concentration plus a strong sense of right and wrong really helps. So when the question comes up, you know, why bother? It's because it's the good thing to do. You know inside. And as you meditate, you get more and more sensitive to your own inner sense of yourself and your own inner sense of how it feels to act on different things. It's so easy to ignore that. We're running out, running out, running out after what we're looking for outside. And don't notice ourselves trampling all over our, our sense of what's right and wrong, our sense of what's really good for us and good for the people around us. But when you meditate, you get a sense to put down those desires for things out there. Just look at what you've got here. What does it feel like inside to be breathing here? What does it feel like inside? to be keeping your awareness inside. What do you become sensitive to? Parts of your awareness that you've been desensitizing yourself to for a long time. As you become more sensitive to them, you begin to gain a sense that acting in the honorable way really does feel right. And you never know. When you do something good, it becomes an example for other people. Sometimes that example is something someone right nearby will notice, and sometimes it's something that will appear only after time. But you want to rest firm in the conviction that okay, even though virtues may seem to be punished all the time and poo-pooed and put down, they do win out in the end. I was translating at John Lee, kept coming across a phrase that he would use. We're concerned about our goodness. We want to maintain our goodness. We want to develop our goodness. And translating it into English felt strange, which forced me to look back on the culture I'd been raised in. And my parents had always had a very strong moral sense and tried to train me in that. But 
You don't hear people in general going around and saying, look after your goodness, take care of your goodness. But the people who do, those are the ones who really are concerned about your well-being. There's that passage where the Buddha talks about people who help work for their own benefit and work for the benefit of others. And it's interesting. If you kill other beings or steal or lie, have illicit sex, this is harming yourself, he said. When you get other people to do things like that, that's harming them. But if you work for your benefit by not doing any of those things, and you work by, for the benefit of others by getting them not to do those kinds of things, in other words, you're concerned about their goodness, you're concerned about your goodness. And that's one of our most valuable possessions. As John Munn used to like to say, it's. It's good that the really valuable things in life are the things that nobody else can steal. And your honor, and the sense of acting on what you know is right in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the sacrifices that have to be made. That's one of your most valuable possessions. <laughs>